Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining today's Independent Lab Genetic Testing Power Authorization Request. I am one of the Georgia Medicaid Fear Rep, and on the phone with me, we have Miss Emily with uh, Alliance Solutions, GMCF, and she'll be also covering the um, prior authorization portion of this presentation. Our agenda today, we will cover the Georgia Medicaid login. We'll cover some key components as far as the web portal navigation. We'll cover eligibility, prior authorization, and how to submit a contact us inquiry. All right, in order to submit any claims to Medicaid or requesting a prior authorization, checking eligibility, this all must be done through our website. Our website address is www.mmis.georgia.gov. As a provider, you must check eligibility anytime you see a Georgia Medicaid member in order to verify that the eligibility has not changed. Some lab codes or some procedure codes may require a prior authorization. And you do want to keep in mind that claim submissions to Georgia Medicaid must be received within six months from the date of service. These are three components that must be verified every time you touch a Georgia Medicaid member. All right, so in order to submit a claim, check eligibility, submit a prior authorization or search a prior authorization, you must log into a website. Once you're in, once you've accessed our website, you'll select the login option. You must have a username and password. You'll enter that. Then once you've gotten to the screen, you'll select the web portal option. In some cases, some providers will need to, or some users may need to select the appropriate facility or doctor that's performing the service. In this case, you'll select the switch user option and then select the appropriate provider ID or facility ID to go into that specific number. What should you do if a prior authorization tab is not listed on your account page? All right, this is where you may have to delegate roles, which means your administrator may need to go out and create a specific username that they'll generate for a specific staff within your facility that may have specific role or specific duties as assigned. All right, in this case, if your provider, if your employee has to check eligibility, uh, submit prior authorization for a specific facility or provider ID, do some prior authorization search, or even submit claims, you can limit the capability depending on that employee's role for that specific username. So a specific username can check eligibility only. You can have a specific username to check prior authorizations only or submit prior authorizations only, or you can have a username to submit claims only, or that same username could be any combination from this list. To set up that specific account, there is a specific link here for you to do that. That link would uh, take you to a CBT, will walk you, to how, uh, walk you through where you'd go in and create that account where you can uh, create a username for a specific user. And like I said, based on their role within your facility, you can delegate uh, whatever role or option you need to assign to that specific employee. Please keep in mind, once that username is created, you cannot change that username in the future. So if that employee leaves and another uh, employee needs to have access, that same username would follow that next employee. So you want to be generic or a username that can be moved to another employee, and then you can just change a password for that specific username when you're creating that billing agent account. All right, so Medicaid eligibility. Eligib eligibility is the first step to determine if a specific member is active for Medicaid. Eligibility should be verified prior to the office visit, facility visit, or any type of treatment that you'll provide um, to that specific member. Checking eligibility will determine if they're currently eligible for your data service, if there's any coverage, um, 
coverage limitation if there's another insurance company out there that we have in our system you can see that underneath the eligibility screen if there's a spend down or any limitations we'll show that on the eligibility screen there are three ways that you can check eligibility you can check eligibility by contacting our call center that number is 1-800-766-4456 you can utilize the IVR system or you can wait to speak to a specific person where they'll verify the eligibility in detail for you. Or you can check the eligibility directly to our website, again, www.mmis.georgia.gov. The IVRS and the Medicaid web portal is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, unless we're doing some sort of system updates. In order to get to the eligibility tab on the web portal, again, you must be logged into the website, www.mmis.georgia.gov. Once you've selected the web portal option, you'll see the eligibility and then eligibility request. There are several ways that you can check eligibility. You can check eligibility using the member ID and the from and through dates of service. Please keep in mind that eligibility can change on a daily basis. So just because a member has eligibility today does not mean that they will have eligibility for tomorrow's date because DFACS and our Social Security Administration can change their eligibility for a specific member or something can or could have happened to that member the next thing. So you'd wanna check eligibility for the specific day in which you see the member. So once you've entered the member ID and the from and through data service, you can hit search. If you're not certain or if there's a number mix up in the member ID, you can search eligibility using the last name, first name, date of birth and social security for that member and the uh, data service and then hit search. Here we show a, a screenshot of a member that does not have any eligibility benefits for a specific day on the far left where it says eligibility by service type and then where it says status it shows inactive for service type code selected which means this particular member does not have eligibility for September 8th 2018. All right so you definitely want to check to see if your specific member is in fact eligible for service on that specific day. Here is another screenshot of a different type of eligibility where it says special notes in the far right. Special notes or limitation indicates that this particular member has Medicare, specifically Medicare, premiums paid only, which means this particular member does not have any eligibility, where it says eligibility by service type in the far left. Again, it shows inactive. This particular member does not actually have any Medicaid eligibility. Another example, this particular member has CCSP Medicaid, which is Community Care Service Program. This uh, eligibility only provides uh, Medicaid eligibility for uh, consumers, elderly individuals, preventing them from going into a nursing home, which means we can provide services at their home where a specific um, personal care support personnel will come out and take care of that specific member in their home to avoid placing those particular members in a nursing facility. In addition to this, this particular member also has qualified Medicare beneficiary. Again, this is another portion of Medicare. So this particular member has um, Medicare premiums paid as well, and we only cover coinsurance and our deductible for this particular member only for medical services. All right, so this particular member has two Medicaid plans, personal support services, as well as Medicare premiums and coinsurance and are deductible only, which means technically they do not actually have any straight Medicaid benefits available. This example, CCS, uh, uh, SSI Medicaid, shows this particular member has Medicaid on the far right. And then el eligibility by service type shows uh, medical care and it does show active. So then I'll be handing it off to Alliant Health Solutions. Thank you. Um, this part of the presentation, we will discuss um, submit 
submission of a genetic testing prior authorization. Next. This presentation will include general rules and guidelines, submission of a prior authorization, or PA, and how to view decisions on prior authorizations. Next. Genetic testing is a new authorization type. Providers must have a category of service of 203 or independent lab services in order to bill for one of these codes. The genetic testing will be PA type IL and codes are listed here. The codes in green can be submitted for billing with the appropriate diagnosis codes. Codes in blue will require a prior authorization before billing can occur and the code in orange 81542 is a non-covered code. Next. All requests must have an effective or start date equal to or greater than the request date, which means that the PA must be submitted prior to the test being complete. The only exception to this would be if the member was awarded retro eligibility. The effective or start date cannot be more than 90 days in the future, and once the PA has been approved, it will be approved for a date span of 120 days. Multiple codes can be listed on the same PA, but each code can only be listed once. If more than one test is to be completed under the same CPT code, then the provider would ask for additional units for this code. Next. To begin the submission process, log on to the Georgia MMIS web portal, hover over the Prior Authorization tab, and from the drop-down menu, select Medical Review Portal. Next. From the Medical Review Portal, you will click on Enter a New Authorization Request. Once you click on that link, a list of PA types populates. Depending on your provider ID, you may have more than one option to choose from. Look for the one that says Genetic Testing and click on it. Next. Your provider ID will auto-populate on this screen. Enter the patient's Medicaid ID number and the ordering provider's REF or reference ID number. Click Submit. Next. This will bring you to the PA template that needs to be filled out. Based on the information entered on the last screen, the member and provider information will be filled in. Some contact information may also populate. Please make sure that this information is correct in case someone needs to contact you regarding the PA request. Enter the date of service. The admit type will be elective and the place of service will be 81 or independent lab. Next. Moving further down on the same page, you will see fields to enter diagnosis and CPT codes. Enter or search for the ICD-10 code, add date, and click add to add a diagnosis code to the PA. More than one diagnosis code can be entered. Then enter or search for a CPT code, add start and end date and number of units. Click on te test description and select which test will be performed. Next. This is the drop-down menu that will appear when you click on the test description box. What you will do is check the box next to the name of the test being requested and then add to add the CPT line to the PA. And note that if you are requesting multiple units of one code, you must select more than one test. You must select each test being added and add that to the request. For code 81479, you must write in the test that will be performed. Next. Scrolling further down the page, you will enter all pertinent clinical information in these three fields. Note that all peach colored fields are mandatory. Once added, click Review Request. Next. Next, the provider is asked to attest that there is a current provider order signed for the test being requested within the last 30 days. Click I agree to continue. Next. Next you will be taken to a screen that has the prior authorization number. You can print this screen or write down the number for your records. You will also have the ability to attach documents here. Next. To create an attachment, click Choose File, 
and select the desired file from your computer. The file name will appear in the text box, then select Attach File. This is where you will attach the signed provider order for the test being requested. You can also upload any other clinical documentation at this time. And all of this information can be in the same document or it can be in separate documents. Next. All right, next we're going to talk about how to view a PA decision. You're going to log into GAMIS and click on the Medical Review Portal as before. Look for the link called Search, Edit, or Attach Documentations to Request. Next. Note that when you are searching, you will only see PAs that have been submitted by you. On the search screen, the provider ID will auto-populate. The most efficient way to search for a PA is by the request ID or PA number, although you can search using any other filters available. Next. The PA or PAs will display below the search criteria. You can see the decision to the far right of the PA line. Click on the request ID to open PA. Next. The PA decision can either be denied or approved. It can also be approved for fewer units. If the PA says pending, then it, ha it has not been reviewed by a nurse yet. If denied, you can hover over the reason to view more information regarding the denial. So in this particular example, the denial reason is MIS or missing information, and you can see that the reviewer wrote that the MD order was not received. Next. And for any additional information, please take a look at the Independent Lab Services Manual, and you will find this on the, the GAMIS, the Georgia GAMIS website. Next. All right, thank you. Right, so like we said before, prior authorization research can be also completed through our website. Again, by logging in www.mmis.georgia.gov. You must enter your username and password. You'll select the web portal option, and then you can always search for any open uh, prior authorization that was actually approved. And here are the examples to do so. Prior authorization, and then from the drop-down, you'll select prior authorization search. Again, if you have that PA number, you can search here to see if that PA was approved, or you can enter the member ID and the from and through time frame that you believe that PA was entered for, or you remembered what that PA days of service were, and then hit search. And then um, this will be where you enter it, and this will be what it'll look like. It'll have the member ID, the dates of service that it was from, and it'll show you the status as well here underneath the Power Authorization Search tab. All right, so this is where you can submit a request to a uh, provider representative. Whenever there's an issue that you come across and you need some additional help, you can always submit a request to your provider relations field services rep. Whenever you're submitting a request to your field services rep, you want to be detailed as far as what are the issues that you're experiencing. So if you're having an issue with the claim, please tell us what the claim number is. If you're having an issue with the prior authorization or member ID, please tell us what the member ID is or the PA is. Um, you can do this through our website. As long as you log in with your username and password, it is secure. Be detailed as possible. The more information you provide to us up front, the faster we can come up with a resolution and then contact you back with whatever um, action needs to be taken on this particular issue. You'd want to leave us an email address and a phone number so that way we can reach you. And if there's a specific time that you're more available, please tell us what time frames or what day of the week that is best to contact you. All right, so this is how you submit a request directly to your field rep. You must be logged in, like I said. Um, you'll select the web portal option. You'll go to where it says contact information. And then from the drop down, you'll select contact us. You'll select where it says select an item. And then from the drop down, there are two options that routes directly to your local field reps box. It doesn't matter which option you choose. 
the first one would be contact my provider service rep or request a uh, provider rep visit. doesn't matter which one you choose, either or it'll come directly into your field rep services work box. And then you'll select the light blue area. And then in your in the description area where it says, how can we help you? This is where you want to be as detailed as possible. And then you'll put in your contact information as well as your first name, last name. And then you'll hit the submit option. And then it gives you a tracking number. That tracking number can be tracked at any time by any call center representative, anyone in management, any other field rep. The state can pull up any details in regards to that tracking number. So this is how we are held accountable and it makes sure that we receive your inquiry as well as it keeps a record of whatever inquiry you've submitted to us. All right, so this is a list. Uh, this is a uh, map of all the territories in the state of Georgia and they're highlighted by different colors. Those colors represent territories and this is a list of all the field reps that are responsible for each one of those territories. Like we said earlier, the call center is available to you Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Again, the number is 1-800-766-4456 or you can choose the contact information contact us inquiry and you can submit that um, inquiry directly to your field rep. As always, you can utilize the IVR system. And the IVR system, you can check eligibility directly through the automated system. You can check claim status, payment information, provider enrollment status. You can select the option for prior authorization if you come across an issue with the prior authorizations that the nurses need to look at. You can select option five. If you need additional um, assistance with EDI, for instance, if you're going through that delegation where you need to set another um, employee up with a username, our EDI department is available to you. You can select the option six and that routes you directly to our EDI department as well for assistance. All right, so we'd like to thank everyone for joining today. Please keep in mind, you, if you come across an area that you need assistance, you can submit that ticket directly to your fill rep or please free to give the call center a call and they can definitely assist you with that. I'd like to thank you guys for joining today. Have a great day. Awesome.